So don't be testimonial on Sunday. What's it like to get to be given a testimonial by the by the club you love? Unbelievable. I mean, it's just a, a fantastic. I can't. What can you say? It's been a. It's emotional. It's. I'm proud. Uh, for the club to think of me in such a way that they could honour me with a testimonial after all these years. I stopped playing nine years ago, you know, and for somebody then to say to you that they, they want to give you a testimonial, it's just, uh, you know, I was gobsmacked to be honest with you. I didn't, I didn't see it coming. But uh, I'm so glad that they, you know, they, they, they think of me in that, that, that respect. How did it come about? Did uh, Bill Canmai get in touch? And... No, it was uh, the manager. The manager pulled me and pulled me aside and said that, you know, for the service that I gave the club and that, and, uh, you know, as a player for the 10 years, and, um, you know, the, 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 the four years I've been coaching, he said they felt it was, a, it was the right thing to do. So it was the manager who told me first, like. Okay. So I was absolutely, you know, made up. Shocked, really, to be honest, yeah. But, um, you know, but great as well. Great feeling, great feeling. What does what does Everton mean to you? Uh, it's like my family, it's my life. Just like everybody in this table, to be honest, yeah. Um, you know, Everton is my life, has been there for 20 odd years. Um, you know, and obviously you know, I'm well behind you guys, you know what I mean? But I'm trying to, <laughs> I'm trying to learn, I'm trying to, I'm trying to be one of, one of the, the, the fans, if you, if you like. And I'm, I'm, it's been a, a tremendous ride for myself in the last 20 years, and hopefully that continues. This means everything to me, you know. Such a passionate club and such passionate fans. You know, what, what, what is the note Love about our club. When, when new players come to the club, do you relay how big this club is to them? Yeah, I think they know. I think they know the passion. I think it's good that um, guys like myself are, are are passing that information on to the players because some of them obviously don't understand what it means to play for the shot. Um, you know, they they come in, they think they understand. Uh, we have to make sure they prod them in the right direction, especially when they play Liverpool. Make sure, <laughs> get, make sure we give them a good kick in the right direction. <laughs> Brilliant. When do you think? When do you think that that bond was sealed between you and the fans? Because obviously you come down on loan and it was you didn't yeah. expect to stay. So when do you think it was actually forged? I think um, I think probably the, when I scored my first goal in the derby game, I think that was a, a massive part of it. Uh, we won that night, we won a good bit run with Big Joe coming. And we won our three games, we won we beat at Liverpool and we only beat Chelsea and we only beat Leeds at Goodison. I think that was a great three games. But I also think the wee bit of time I spent up north on holiday, when we, you know, that, that wee bit of time there, I think the support that the, the fans showed me when I was in there was just tremendous and I still look back on it, you know, in my great uh, pride that I've got so many letters and so many um, things, you know. It's really uh, it's cutting up to actually thinking about it. Mm. Does it make you smile that a lot of the fans are sort of giving you this iconic status that, that it's not only the, the goals you score, but sometimes they smile at some of the other incidents, the yeah. Stephen Froins and that as well. No, I think... Do you look and smile at that? <laughs> <laughs> I do, yeah. I, I should have done it more often. I think, uh, some more fans, because... <laughs> That was Paul Beezer and scoring goals. <laughs> uh, but no, I mean, obviously it's the whole thing, isn't it? It's like you, you connect with some fans. Some fans, you know, look at a goal scoring record, they look at who you are as a person, look at how you play. I mean, my hero was, uh, when I was a grown up, was a lad called David Cooper. And I've got no idea how many goals he scored for Everton. I just love David Cooper, you know, yeah. and he had a great left foot and I loved him. Yeah. Um, so fans can relate to uh, another player in any way they, they, they see fit, didn't they? Yeah. Yeah. Obviously, the way I played, there'd, there'd be a lot of boys in there. Terrace is probably like to strangle Stephen Freud as well. It's a more class than enough t-shirts that people buy, isn't it? So I know, you know <laughs> and as I said, well, it's German, isn't it? So, yeah. well, like, <laughs> Have you finished all your badges now, Tom? Yeah, I'm fully qualified, fully yeah. Qualified I, I went through it th three or four years. I, I dedicated myself to that. I'd been through my B licence before I went to Everton. I'd already started that process. Um, then I went through my life and through my pro life, and so it's all completed. Does completed. Does management excite you? Does it scare you? Mm, yeah, you know, some, it, it's, I wouldn't be lying to you if I said to you, you, you people don't, you don't think about these things, you know what I mean? Yeah. But to be honest with you, I really enjoy my coaching. Mm. That, that could be my, my place. You know what mm. I mean, it might be coaching. I enjoy, I enjoy coaching with the kids. Uh, I've been promoted through the first team, I enjoy that part of it as well. Mm. Uh, you know, and, you know I, just, I, I love being a part of Everton, I love being involved in the coaching. Um, you know, what, what happens in the future? You know, you don't know. I would never rule anything out. But at the moment, I'm really concentrating on my coach, and that's where I see myself. What type of manager do you think Duncan Ferguson will be, and how much are you learning from Roberto? Um, yeah, I mean, you're learning every day. I've learned, I've learned from the manager and uh, a lot of aspects of the game, and looking into detail into the game and tactical situations, etc., etc. So I've, I've learned that that part from him, but I've learned that part for other managers as well. Mm. 
some great managers, I mean, iconic managers. I mean, guys that spring to mind, like Howard Kendall, you know, who's really as a, a mentor of mine and as a, a real gentleman and, a, and, a, and you know, he is a legend, the Everton Football Club. So I look to boys like that uh, who influence me as well. Um, so I, I take it for all different managers, but certainly Howard and, you know, Moise and, and, and um, Roberto and, you know, Walter Smith, though. I mean, even when I looked at Rud Hullet in Newcastle, things like that. So, you can, and I've got international managers, you know, how and you, how you are going to do it and how not to do it, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It's two-sized, it, isn't it? As a manager, I, I, as a coach, you know, I'm quite a... I, I see myself as quite a quiet and level-headed fella. It's completely different for playing, believe me. Because <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like, you know, it's two different kind of uniforms, I think. You know, there's one when you're playing... And that's just a battle, as far as I'm concerned. You get in the pitch, and there's other one when you're coaching. It's completely different. When you look back, do you regret any of those instances, or not? Do you just think it's part of your makeup, and that's the that's the guy you are? Or when you look back, do you think, no, maybe I shouldn't. Have, have yeah, I mean, I think we all look back with a certain thing. You know, maybe I could have kept my temper a bit better there, or maybe pull back a little bit. Part of your game, it's part of it. Yeah, I mean, yeah. you're going to change your. No, I mean, uh, and obviously when these incidents happen, you're not thinking, are you? No. You know, if you're thinking you're in, you're in the dinner, you're winner, you know, so you just you let your emotions run away for yourself. That's the way I played. Um, I, I seen it as a as a you know a, a battle winning a football match, and I wanted to put myself about as, as best I could, and I used that intimidation to to get the upper hand on on players. I did that. Other players have did it through the years. Um, so yeah, you've always got regrets, but would I change it? I don't think I would change that much. I, you know, you change maybe certain aspects, but I mean, I wouldn't want to change myself as a player, no. Obviously, really well on Sunday. What's your memories of that famous night? Yeah, no. referee. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to you swear can call him that. I was going to call him <laughs> that. Uh, very unfair Italian who basically stitched us up, didn't he? There's something like that. I can't see any playing in that. He, the first 30, 30 seconds of the game, I remember him. I think I held a player off and he, he blew for a foul right away. And I thought to myself, Here, I said, Here we go. And he just he earmarked me right away, and I know for when I when I when I headed that ball, and he knew it was me, and he just blew. There was no other player, but if it'd been anybody else, he wouldn't have blew. Mm-hmm. And he blew. He targeted me that night. That's what I believe. And uh, you know, and to be fair, you look back in the tapes, my God, I mean, I don't know what he's looking at. I mean, does anybody yeah, know what he's yeah, looking at? He's talking about something away out here that. Mark it's Spence. It's just a joke, yeah, and it's, it's, it's complete yeah. shambles. So yeah. I look back in that way. You know, it's, it's disappointing that that decision went against us because we had them on the ropes. We're pushing them back. We'd have, we'd have took them any extra times. They they caused the count later in the game because we were pushing for it. So we'd have, we'd have had them. We'd have beat them that night, and they were on the semi final. So they weren't a bad team, were they? The night, the night you you left and went to Newcastle. I remember being about six or seven and crying my eyes out. Um, and I remember my dad always promised me that you'd, you'd come home one day. Mm. How's the feel when you actually come back? Yeah. Yeah, top. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah it's hardly. You know. when, you, when you look at football now, how do you think a 25-year-old Duncan Ferguson would cope now with... The, the way the game's changed and the referees yeah, and, and obviously think... being no contact basically. <laughs> yeah, I, I think the game's horrible. And in part, I don't mean that that way, you know what I mean? I think that frustrated though. I, I watch, you, you look back and you, uh, you ever watched all the um, football, movie, football matches on Sky and all that? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And like I was watching Buddy Howard Kendall playing for Birmingham <laughs> against Liverpool about three months ago. And I'm just, I just flicked the thing on and I see how we're playing. I'm thinking, and I see them going into each other and tackling and running up and doing and these iconic figures protecting their reputation. And what didn't they go doing it? If they went doing they jumped back up, all covered in mud. The fans were all screaming. I sat and watched about four or five of the games back to back. Then it went down to Chelsea and watched all the big hard Chelsea players playing against Man United and I watched Everton play. It was just a different game. It was unbelievable. The way it's gone now, it's just... It's, for me personally, I just think it's just a joke. It's so soft and so... Uh, you know, not, it just there's just too many free kicks. There's too many. The referee's getting too much involved, and there's too many penalty kicks. So I've been going and on and on. It's not for me. I prefer it. I mean, why? Why would you want to outlaw tackling? I mean, why is it? Obviously, it's somebody who's not a defender who's bloody setting up the rules, isn't it? Because <laughs> yeah. tackling's a part of the game. You can't even push somebody off the ball now. So if you rolled it the other way, would you have liked to play in the seventies? Because you probably still yeah. Would have, would have been an excellent yeah, ability yeah, because the normal hunter tackles and ability no, grabbers. I well. wonder why sometimes <laughs> the, the fans kind of get off their seats, yeah, you know, and yeah. you kind of get an atmosphere on the ground. Yeah. I mean, everybody loves the first tackle, didn't they? Everybody loves yeah. getting through something. If you've got two yeah. iconic figures in another yeah. team, yeah. it's like, oh, who can, even, who can get in there first, you know? <laughs> but no, uh, no, it's no. Can it's I just no, ask you, we're obviously, we're obviously in the Lily Centre today. I mean, what, 
what does this charity mean to you? Well, it means a lot. I mean, I've only I've been here for about twelve months now. With Peggy and Winnie have asked me to um, obviously with the Dave Fix and the, the late great Dave Fix and the Cannibal Kid. Um, you know, he was a great friend of mine and a lovely, lovely fellow. I mean, top top boy and top top player. He, he sadly passed away, and I think the 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 two of them thought, you know, they, it maybe I could help them out. So yeah, I'm absolutely delighted when the two of them asked me, Winnie and Peggy, and. Uh, it means a lot, and it's a local area, and that's what I like. You know, we're sitting here, some of the real fans, the real people, and uh, that's what I want to be a part of. That, you know, and it was a bit different because it was a breast uh, breast cancer, but also fellas get breast cancer as well. Mm. Unbelievable, something you nothing about. So um, that was that was a, I thought that was a nice touch, you know. And it's for this area, and this is what really I, I like that because I've got a lot of friends in this area, and this is where I, I, that, that I felt was a good cause. You know what I mean? So just on Sunday, let me just. Picture the scene, about 20 minutes to go, you and Wayne Rooney playing up well, front try, together. Try to take 15 minutes off that. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll, uh, Wayne, Wayne, Wayne will probably, Wayne is going to play a lot longer than me, of course he is. Um, I'll probably be doing to the manager in the end, and, but Wayne will play a lot longer than myself. I'm going to try and get out there as best I can, but I just want to see, I'm a very proud fella, you know what I mean? And I do not want to embarrass myself. I had a, I had a special, special moment in my last game against mm. uh, West Brom, and it was, you know, they nearly went. So I nearly, <laughs> nearly, <laughs> I nearly, I nearly boxed the whole, the whole job up, which I wasn't even on the penalties, by the way. Uh, I'd, no. I'd cramp, I'd cramp my two calves at the time, and the players turned around and said to me, "Give me the ball." You'd get, I was like, "Oh my God, what can you do?" You know what I mean? So when I took, the, I took that penalty, and luckily some had come back to me and I managed to squeeze it in. It was unbelievable, and I think about that all the time. No, I don't want any, anything at all to, to damage that. Mm-hmm. If you know what I mean. And I don't want any in the fans to, you know, to to damage you. Mm-hmm. So, but I'll definitely try and get there as best I can. And you know, if I'm good for a few minutes at the end, you know, and, and pay homage to to the fans, that I'll do that. Re- so, reflect on Sunday. It's sort of what would be uh, your marquee Last game? Last question. Good what, what was the, what was, Sorry, your, can you what was your best game at Goodison Park? And if you reflect on your career? The best game I've ever played in, yeah. or the, be- the the best game I've the best performance I've ever put in was against Newcastle. Nice. When I was here the first game. That was the best performance I'd, I'd put in. Um, I was fully fit and I, I was flying. And so that was yeah. that was the one that sticks to my mind. Yeah. But there's other games that the derby games are, yeah. are, the, are the, obviously the games that I remember the most, as in for the adrenaline and for scoring goals. Yeah. That's the most important thing to me. Um, there was a goal I, I scored in the edge of the box, turned and smacked it in the net, and I remember the fans delay yeah. because <laughs> when I hit it, yeah. it flew in, and I think the fans. <laughs> You know, and the, 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 the atmosphere then. So yeah. derby games are always the most specialist games to play in, yeah. always. But if you're talking about performance-wise, right. yeah. I'd have said that Newcastle game was Fantastic. probably my best performance. Thank you. Brilliant. Thanks, Thanks so much. Thank you, much. Thanks. All right. Thank you. All right. We'll be done and into the danger area Morales sliding as he hit that one flicked on into Baptistao who opens the scoring for Villarreal well that's something to work on for Roberto Martinez and his team Nahuel puts it into the back of the net. Nahuel Lieber. The boy born in Argentina with a very cool finish. And it's come through to Gerard again here. Maybe his last appearance in a Villarreal shirt. And he's denied a second goal by the legs of Tim Howard. Stephen Naismith flashes wide of the post. Tom Cleverley will be replaced, but look who's coming on wearing number 18. And he's back and everything is forgiven. 
and then he almost got on the score sheet. Surely fairy tales don't happen like this, do they? Straight into the box, the header back across, goal! Bounces against the woodwork. Touch from Bruno into his own frame of the goal. It doesn't go down as an effort on target still. There might be worse problems here. I'm not sure how I've got a touch on that from Ibi Yeleko. That cheer tells you everything. The man they've come to celebrate is about to come on. Six and a half minutes he will get. And the header is off the line, and Browning can't head it, help it in either. It was Leon Osman's effort that was initially blocked. Duncan this time, it's not, it's Browning who scores for Everton. Big hug from Duncan, you took it off my head. Do you know what you've done? Good job you scored. Baines delivers just beyond Big Duncan, and he was free as well. He also went down in the box there and appeared to be pushed. Doesn't really matter. He's wearing a belt there, isn't he? And the final score from Goodison is Everton 1, Villarreal 2. 2 1.
Thank you. 